Hey everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back. I'm so excited to have you here because I'm really excited to do this project. This particular project has been on my little craft to-do list for a couple months now. So I think it's just time that I finally do it. And because I think I've been thinking about it so much and trying to pick out all the perfect elements and pair my designs that I finally just need to create it because I'm so excited just to see how it turns out. So we are going to be making little embroidery hoops with my girls' initials on each one. So I'm going to be making two today with a couple different fabrics and I'll go over everything that you're going to need. Um, I believe these are eight inch hoops that I'm using, but you can use um, any size that you want. So you'll need some hoops. Um, they're measuring right around um, a little over eight inches. Um, so I think they come in the um, full size. So I think it's just eight inches. So that's the size I have, but again, choose whatever you'd like. Um, we are gonna be using the felt flowers that we did in the last tutorial. So if you missed that tutorial, um, that was my first time ever making felt flowers. They turned out really, really sweet. And I was actually making them for this project in mind. So if you need help doing um, felt flowers, be sure you reference that video. I'll put it right up here. Um, that way, I hope you guys, who, the ones who have caught the video, have been practicing your felt flowers because I was telling you to get started because this is going to be a really fun project. And now if you have your felt flowers ready, you guys are going to be all set. No worries if yours aren't ready. Just reference that um, video and you guys can start practicing and get all set. Um, other thing I did um, was I cut out little leaves just to add as fillers for the project. So um, these, I will add in the description box below the little code for in Design Space. That way you can go cut them out. You'll use the same directions that you do to cut out the felt flowers. So they're just a separate design. And they come flat, obviously. So what I did was I just kind of pinched the ends with a little hot glue and just kind of glued them together just so they would take on more of a 3D um, and dimensional look to them. Because when they were flat, um, paired with the flowers, they just didn't look like lifelike and real. So I thought it would just make it look a little bit better to do it that way. Um, so I think that's it for um, the felt. So again, reference that video if you guys need help making the flowers. Um, it's going to be really, really easy to do. I was intimidated by felt flowers, but I was actually giggling after I was done because they're a lot easier than I thought. Okay, so embroidery hoops, we'll need the felt flowers and a little filler leaves. I did um, four of each um, size, and again, you can find those codes down below. You're also going to need some fabric. So I picked up two, actually these came in a little pack together in a little fat quarter um, pack. Um, and so I think there were three other designs in there. So this is like an orange sherbet, um, like kind of cream sickle color. Um, it has little butterflies on it. It's super sweet. And then this is a really pretty um, hot pink gingham. So I did pre-wash my fabric because we are going to be placing HTV on this. So I did wash and dry and then I did a light iron with my easy press just to get it looking all nice for um, the project. Uh, we'll also be using some really pretty ribbon. I grabbed this at Hobby Lobby. Um, oh, the, this is from Hobby Lobby as well, just in case I didn't mention that. Um, so this is just in the sewing section. It's the Ribbon Boutique. It's a really nice, more of a pale pink gingham. So it looks really, really nice. Um, we'll, we're going to need a hot glue gun and then we're going to use the little mini easy press today for this project. So that'll be really, really fun. I love using that. And then some scissors and a weeding tool. We're going to use some white um, iron on. So this is just the Cricut Everyday Iron On. And then I grabbed a little hand towel um, just to help with the iron on process. So um, you guys will see a little bit more of why I use that in just a moment. But for now, just know that a hand towel may come in handy for um, when we are going to iron on the HTV. Okay, so for uh, the beginning of the project, I think before design space, what I'm going to do is I am going to place the material, the fabric inside the embroidery hoops. So I'm just going to unfold these. And if you have never worked with an embroidery hoop, it comes um, a loop within a loop, if um, if that makes sense. So it'll come like this with this little screw at the top. So you're just going to untighten it, and then the top part just slips off. So you'll just put that over here. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to place your fabric right on top. And leaving just a little bit of fabric around the edge, then you're going to place see I'm gonna try to straighten this so the gingham is kind of even let's see here 
So you're just going to place the hoop right back on there. Let's see, does that look straight enough to me? This is when you can get a little picky. That actually looks pretty good. Okay, so then what you're going to do is you're just going to make sure that's flat on there. And then you're just going to tighten that right back up. So it's super easy. Okay. And then what I like to do is I just like to start like really pulling and tightening the fabric. That way it gets really, really tight in the center. It also helps if you have any little wrinkles. It doesn't completely remove them, but it sure smooths them out. So I'm just gonna pull. Okay. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I'm actually going to, hold on. I'm gonna add the ribbon as well to this part. So let me add, let me turn on my hot glue gun. I decided I wanted to add, let me turn this on. Okay, I decided I wanted to add the ribbon a little uh, cleanly, if you will. So sorry, let me take this back off. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to add the ribbon to the top here. Okay, and I'm gonna give myself just about that much room. Okay. Okay, so let me measure. Well, let me get this kind of put together here. So I'm just going to glue. I'm going to put a line of glue just at the end of my ribbon here. Okay. And then I'm just going to place the other piece right on top, just to connect them. Okay, so now I got a little ahead of myself because I've been thinking about how I want to do this. I'm going to place this little glued part just in the back, so that way we don't see it. And then I'm going to just place it right over that little screw clasp, if you will and then I will put everything together. Okay, so I need to readjust that just a hair. Okay. So we have a little, a little loop up here. Okay. So I just kind of line that up again. I had it so perfect. Okay, but it will, it will all line up again. Okay, so just again, tightening that screw and this is just hidden underneath this little ribbon now. So I just like how that looks. You can definitely apply your ribbon however you'd like to. Um, so if you wanna do like a bow or however you want, that's totally fine. Um, but I just thought this looked really clean. So I'm just gonna again go through and I just kind of go around the edge and just kind of pull, pull, pull just to tighten, make sure this hoop is really down. Okay. That looks great. Okay, so now I am just going to make sure I like how it all is. Okay. I might pull this just a little to the side. It's a little tricky with like a gingham um, because there are obvious lines. So if you pull too tight, then you're going to distort the lines, if that makes sense. So if you pull, see over here, if I pull too much, then it kind of curves up. So I just want to make sure that I'm being mindful of keeping the integrity of the design. Okay, so let me just double check. I think that looks great. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to turn this over. I'm gonna grab my fabric scissors. And I just wanna save as much of the fabric as I can. So I'm gonna cut that first because I wanna be able to use this for other projects. Okay. 
perfect. So now we can just set that fabric aside. And now what we're going to do is we are just going to cut as close as we can to the hoop. So you'll just kind of go around the hoop and cut as close as you can. Okay, so now we're just finishing up and discarding our little pieces. And then you can just go through um, and just continue, you know, to, it almost is like, <laughs> it's kind of like that old comic or I don't even know where it is with the guy who is trimming his grass, but you're just gonna, uh, you know, kind of almost trim the grass with scissors on this and just kind of go around and just see what areas need a little bit more and what areas could, are, are just fine so okay so now we've got that all ready so I think that looks really really pretty what do you guys think okay so this is kind of the base that we're gonna do so I'm gonna go ahead and do the orange color and again um, just laying down I took the top hoop off laying down the nice now this fabric doesn't really have a set um, line or design to it so you don't have to worry about you know distorting the the design or anything okay so now I want to make sure that these hoops they're gonna go in their individual rooms so they're not gonna it's not gonna really matter if they don't line up just right but I want to try so let me cut this and then I'll measure for you guys how big these hoops or these little loops were that way you guys know isn't this pretty it has like a little pom-pom on it too I think it looks super nice okay so we're done with that and let me measure this for you so you know so you guys I'm not joking that's literally exactly 12 inches <laughs> Literally, I'm just not even a hair off. So 12 inches in ribbon. So again, I just took a little bead of glue. Oh, hold on. We got to put it through our hoop first. Okay, put it through your hoop. Then take a little bead of glue and then just kind of put it on the end there. Okay, and then just apply that little top part just like that. Just kind of press it for just a second so it really glues itself together. Oh, I'm laughing over the length of that ribbon. How funny is that? Okay, so again, you're just going to slide this right over the little screw um, closing closure little thing. I'm not sure the exact turn. So we'll just slide that over there and then you'll make sure that little glued part is in the back and saving as much fabric as we can we'll just kind of put it up in this little left hand corner and this one will be a lot easier because this design is just kind of um, eclectic kind of just haphazard those little butterflies are just kind of going everywhere so that was a little quicker I'm just tightening that screw really tight very cute I love it okay and then again just going through and pulling just pulling around that fabric just so it's nice and tight okay so now what I'm gonna do is again I'll just cut around the edge and we will be all set and we will head into design space and start making our initials. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space and the first thing we're gonna do is we are just going to take the shapes tool and make two circles that represent the eight inch um, embroidery hoops that we are working with. So I'm just gonna go up here to size. I'm gonna double click and just type in eight for our number. And then this one will be a nice pink color and then I'll duplicate it. And our second one is going to be that like nice orange sickle cone um, color. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is these are just for sizing purposes only. This is gonna help me size my um, letter initials that are going to be on the, um, that we're gonna iron on to the fabric. So um, we aren't gonna do anything other than just kind of help our eye visually size not too small, but not too big. So now I'm gonna go over to my text box and I am going to add a K. This font is called Kate's ABC's Girl. Kate, I think it's Kate ABC's 
baby girl. So I love this font. It's really fun for kids. It's just a really, really pretty font. So I'm going to bring that up here. I am going to uh, color this a white color because we're going to do white HTV or iron on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to size this up. So I'm just going to size it right around. That actually looks really good. So I don't want it too big because I don't think, I think when you measure a um, design too big, I don't think it looks as intentional. I always um, make sure I have a lot of and plenty of space around my design. And I also want to be aware that I am going to be placing flowers around my hoop. So I don't want my initial to get too crowded. I want them to complement one another. So I want to make sure this is thoughtfully um, measured out and sized correctly. So I like how that looks. I think that looks really, really nice. The next thing I'm going to do is because I like this size, I'm just going to duplicate it, pull a one over here, and then I'll double click and then make this a C for my second daughter. Okay, so now that I have them all ready to go, I'm gonna hide these circles by just clicking the little eye on the layers panel. And then I'm gonna be using my maker. Now you can cut iron on with any um, cutting machine, but I'm going to use my maker today because I did use my maker to make the felt flowers. So I'm just going to use the same machine for the entire project. Um, it would be confusing if I switched mach machines halfway through. So because I use my maker for the um, little wool felt flowers, then I'm going to just continue with my maker for the rest of the project. So now I'm going to click make it. And now since we are working with iron on, we need to mirror our image. This just makes it print upside down or backwards. Um, their iron on does come with a built and carrier sheet so you guys will see more of why we mirror once it gets cutting if that's confusing to you but for now just know that we're going to mirror the image we'll click continue and then it's just going to locate our uh, Cricut machine via Bluetooth and now we're going to select everyday iron on so we're going to stay at default pressure and then this little alert comes up that says make sure mirror is turned on we can verify that right here it says mirror is on and then it says make sure that the iron on material is face shiny side down. So we'll make sure we do that when we load our mat. So we're just going to make sure that the fine point blade is loaded. Again, default pressure, and then we'll get cutting. Now, before I switch cameras, I want to show you the heat guide. I love using the heat guide when um, I'm doing a iron on or heat transfer vinyl project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the um, press that I'm going to be using. Again, we're going to do the Cricut Easy Press Mini. I'm going to select the heat transfer material, which is everyday iron on, and then the base material, which is 100% cotton. We'll hit apply. And then it's going to tell us we're going to preheat our setting or our, preheat our fabric for five seconds. We're going to um, put it on medium heat. So two little wavy marks on the Easy Press for 25 seconds. And then it just tells you how to do it. So constant pressure with light constant movement, light pressure. We'll flip it over and do an additional 15 seconds. And then this is a warm peel. I do love this because it also gives you um, the supplies that you're going to need, how to prepare your project, of course, how to apply your design. And then I like that it has a care instruction. So if you're making a t-shirt or something that's going to be washed, it does give you some additional care instructions on how to, you know, make your project last longer. Okay. So that is just how you use the heat guide. Again, it's on Cricut.com. I love it. It just really simplifies, um, heat transfer vinyl or iron on projects. All right, let's get cutting and we will start putting this project together. Okay, so I'm just placing my iron on onto my blue mat and I'm using my brayer tool just to make sure it's all down. And again, it is shiny side face down. So you will notice there's a shiny side and a dull side. So again, shiny side face down. That shiny side is actually the carrier sheet. So it'll be obvious in person which side to do it, but just don't forget that step. So now the Cricut has the flashing arrow key all ready and flashing. So we're just gonna load our Cricut. And then once it starts flashing the little Cricut button, just like that, we will get it cutting. So while that's cutting, I'm just going to again reference that heat guide and I'm going to preheat the mini. So I'm going to turn it on and just double click this until both little wavy lines light up and that is again going to be that medium heat. So I'll just set it back on the base and let it heat up and then it'll chime I believe when it's all ready to go. So this is already done. So we'll go ahead and remove our mat, looks great. 
And then what we'll do is just slowly, let's turn this over, just peel this mat away. And then we can just use our scissors and cut away, being careful not to cut our actual design. We will cut away our extra, that way we can just roll it back up and save it for the next project. Who is crafting? Is everybody crafting? It's currently, let's see, today is Sunday. And the girls just went outside with daddy. And I'm just taking a little time to craft before another week begins of being at home. We've actually been having a lot of fun. Um, but it's nice just to recharge, you know, before another week. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my weeding tool and I'm just going to weed out the area. There it goes. So now it's green and it's just letting us know it's all preheated, so we're all set. Okay, so again, weeding out is just taking away any of the design that you are not going to be using. So for letters, it's really easy to determine. Okay, so I've already got the C, perfect. So I'll just kind of lay this over here. Um, in case I didn't mention, I can't remember if I did or not, but the um, fabric is pre-washed. So I did do that, I washed dried, and then I used my Easy Press, my bigger Easy Press, um, it's out of camera, but I used that to um, just iron it and get it looking all pretty and straight. So we'll just do the K really quick here. Very easy. And then with iron-on or HGV, you wanna make sure that your scraps are completely cleared off of your surface before you use the iron. And I tell you that because if you have little pieces laying around and they accidentally get on your project, if you go to heat um, your project, they will iron on and then it's just a stinker because now you have part of your project um, that you weren't going to have on there. So here's the nice K. I just love this font. It's just really traditional and fun. Okay, so that looks awesome. Oh, I love how those look. Okay, so now this is where the towel is going to come in handy. So because um, we want like a flat surface underneath and because it's kind of raised under there, we need something to kind of build up under there. So I'm just going to take a towel and then just set it under there. That way we have something to press on there. So then it did say we were going to, I'm gonna reference my guide, we are going to preheat for five seconds. Okay. I am so, so excited to see how this turns out. Oops, don't put that on your mouse pad, but okay. That wouldn't be good. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is just lay our little C here. And I love iron-on because you can lay it down, pick it up, lay it down, pick it up as many times as you need to. And I'm just gonna lay it down and just kind of measure. That's two and a quarter and two and a half. I might bring that over just a little. Or did I go the wrong way? I think I went the wrong way. Goodness. Okay, two and a half and two and a half, and then we're at two and two and a half. So I'll bring this up just a little. Okay, Whoop. two and a half, about two and a half, two and a quarter. Okay, so now once that is on there, what we're gonna do is we are just going to um, do constant pressure with our little mini easy press for 25 seconds. So I'm just gonna kind of rub and count. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. You kind of get in a rhythm with your rubbing too. <laughs> 21, 22, 23, 
24, 25. Okay, and then I'm just going to do the next little section. Okay, so now let's put that there. And it is a warm peel. The top is was done first. So just give it a second just so we don't do a hot peel. But we'll just give it a second. Sorry, I was quiet there for a second, but it's hard for me to chat and count at the same time. The only thing about the mini is I wish it did. I know that, you know, it has limited space, but I wish it had the timer feature that way that, you know, it could just count for me. I feel like I'm, what is it, Ross on Friends who's doing one Mississippi lane, two Mississippi lane. When he's in the, oh goodness, no, I'm going to start giggling. When he's in the tanning booth and he, have you guys seen that episode? Please tell me you have. Let, leave me a comment if you've seen that where he is self-tanning and they tell him to count. It's so funny. Okay, so that looks really, really good. So you'll just want to make sure that none of the little pieces are lifting. And if they are, you will just replace this down. Um, so you want to keep your little carrier sheet until you are completely um, fine with it being um, down because if you want to repress, you never want to press just on top of, um, you know, bare vinyl. So make sure you never do that. You always want to keep a sheet handy. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is we are just going to flip that over and then it said we are just going to do 15 seconds on the back. Okay, so we are all good. So that looks great. And it's all down perfectly. So now you can just discard this little sheet. As long as you have nothing peeling up that you need to repress, then you are free to just toss that. So now we'll just set this one to the side. So cute. And we'll just put this one right here and get it all placed down. And we'll do our best to get it straightened out. Okay, so. We are, let's see, should this bottom one, it's kind of hard, so I'm just going to kind of go in the middle here, so two and half, it's kind of hard with a K to measure, the tops and bottoms will be a little bit easier, two and a quarter, so I'll just go up just a tad, okay, so I'm going to go right there. Oh, I forgot to preheat my material. Okay, I'm going to kind of preheat. It's already centered, so I'm just going to kind of preheat it in sections here. <laughs> I just did all that hard work. I'm not going to take that all the way off. So I'm just going to do it in sections. Five seconds. You can tell I am so excited to see the final project because I'm just giddy about it. So I'll just flip that other side and do this little side too. Okay. Improvising. Getting crafty with crafting. Okay, so make sure I still like that K, which I do. Okay, now I'm just gonna start again, 25 seconds, constant pressure, or constant movement, light pressure. I'll start in this like top right quadrant of the K. Okay, and then just continuing to move into all the little quadrants, just because it's not quite big enough to do the entire one on one little press but it's looking really, really nice. I'm counting my Mississippi's. Okay, so that's all done. So now I'm just going to, I might as well just do the back real quick while that, doing that. Okay, and then I'll just do my 15 seconds. Okay, so on my first one, I, I peeled it up and then flipped it on the back and then put that carrier sheet down before I peeled. But so this one, I did it the correct way. So it was press for 25 with the carrier sheet on and then flip over and do the other side. So, um, but luckily I had the carrier sheet on the last time too. So no worries. Okay, so that peeled just fine. It doesn't look like there's any lifting. So we are good to go. That looks so cute. I love this fabric. I'm so glad I have more of that. I might need to, when, um, when it's safe to go back out shopping eventually, um, definitely get some more of this fabric. That's gonna be awesome. Okay, so now we are done with our little press. So I'll get him turned off. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna do our little flowers. So we are going to be using our hot glue. And this is just going to be 
however you like. So this is going to be the little creative part of it. Um, so there's really no rhyme or reason for this part. I'm going to grab a little bit of extra glue just to keep on hand and put that in my little glue gun there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do before anything else is I, let's see, I have, how many leaves do I have? I think I have four per one. So I'm just going to, I think I wanted to kind of split up, so maybe put the orange here and then this one over here, this one over here. And then I think, oh no, we can't do that because, okay. So this is how I'm gonna arrange it. And so you can just play around with arranging however you'd like. Um, you can decide if you want your flowers down here. That would be really cute too. Actually, that is super cute. I might do that. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this one. And I'm gonna put the greens in the middle because I wanted to um, just kind of place them away from the leaves. That way they're just separated. So I'm just gonna apply, actually, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply hot glue to the actual base. So on the um, hoop, I'll just apply a little line of glue there and then I'll just place my flower. And I'll just press, just make sure that gets down. Now, if you have another way that you wanna apply your um, flowers, by all means, do whatever is best for you. Hot glue is working perfect for me. Okay, so that's on there. So now I'm just going to kind of scrunch this guy in this one right here and keep wanting to apply it to the flower, but I think it's better to put it right on that hoop. Okay, so I'm just going to, whoops, get back up there. Okay, put this one right here. sweet okay and then the last one Oops. last one is right here Okay, so now if you need any more glue, you can just kind of lift up a flower and place some glue and lay back down if you find that any parts are just not as steady as others. Because sometimes the base of your flower um, is, you know, a little uneven. So sometimes it can be a little tricky to glue down. So just kind of play around and see how those are gluing and add as you need. And then once you're done, you can always re-fluff these, so don't worry too much about that. Okay, so now we're just going to add our leaves. So I did, again, I did two different sizes of leaves, and I'm just going to kind of tuck them right under the ends. So I'll tuck this one here, super cute, and then I'll have this one kind of coming out this way. Perfect. Careful not to burn myself on the hot glue. Okay. Okay, so moving on to the C, what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna make them similar but I'm and still do the bottom part with the florals, but what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna go on this side because I really like this curvature of the C. I think it would be nice to kind of play with that and just kind of do my little round section here. So now what I'm gonna do is just put, again, that little green one in the middle. Glue that one down. And again, I just chose that one to be in the middle because it's similar in color to the leaves, so I just kind of wanted to break that up. And then a little bit more glue here. Okay. I'm really happy with how these are turning out. They've been on my wish list for quite a while, so it's going to be really nice to get these hung up in the girls' room rooms okay so cute so then again you can kind of fluff and layer as much as you want after they're down and then again with the leaves just kind of tucking under so sweet 
I have to say after I cut felt for the first time I um, have added three or four more um, felt projects to my content calendar because I had so much fun and now that I've kind of gotten over my jitters of working with felt um, now I feel like I am just ready to tackle some fun things that I've kind of wanted to try for a long time. So make sure you guys are subscribed because there's going to be some really cutie patootie things coming up on the channel. Okay, so actually I'm going to tuck those kind of side by side. All right, so we're all done with that. Oh my goodness, they are so cute. So then just kind of pull any little strings off. They come off so easy from the hot glue. And there we have it. That's it. I'm in love with them. They're so cute. They're exactly what I wanted. They're exactly what I was envisioning. So I'm glad I just finally did it. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. I would love it. And also please leave me a comment. Tell me what you're up to. And um, I hope you guys are all crafting and having a good time. It's a wonderful way just to relieve some stress. And um, I don't know about you, but it kind of just makes me kind of feel normal for a little bit amongst everything that's going on. Um, again, for hanging, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to place like a little thumbtack um, in between the two and hang it by the back thread. That way you don't see the hanging. So it'll be right inside here. Um, just in case you guys were wondering how on earth I'm going to hang these. Um, and if you needed to know if you were going to do this same kind of um, ribbon method that I did. I do like that how clean that looks. Um, it just looks really polished and nice. So all right everyone thumbs up if you loved it. Um, I really loved it and I am happy you guys joined me with this. And again if you need help with felt flowers um, I'll link that video again and be sure you're subscribed because there's going to be so many fun things coming up and I just did a lot of shopping for um, blanks and fun things for the channel. I'm really excited to show you what's coming up. So while we're all home and staying cozy, we might as well craft. So get all set and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful week.